I've been working on a video about retro games emulation in virtual reality for a while now. I've spent a lot of time researching different ways to play all the different consoles in VR to find what methods work best. However, all of my days of research and filming became completely obsolete when I discovered a new piece of software called Emu VR. That's what you're seeing right now. At first glance, it seems like a highly customizable 90s to early 2000s era bedroom with some retro consoles and old televisions, but you really start to understand the magic of Emu VR when I tell you all of the electronics in this room are fully functional. This PlayStation can actually play PlayStation games. This NES plays actual NES games. We've even got a Dreamcast! Kinda. It's not been 3D modeled yet, so it just looks like a generic 80s console, but it does still play actual Dreamcast games. Oh my god, this is so f***ing cool. Not only that, but everything in the environment is so interactive. You can pick up or spawn items such as consoles and furniture and place them anywhere you like. You need to manually plug the AV cables from the consoles into the televisions. You need to manually insert the discs or cartridges, which can be optionally customized to have the real disc artwork from the original discs. You need to manually power on the consoles and televisions. All of the visuals, interactivity, and retro gaming culminates into one of the greatest rushes of nostalgia I've ever experienced. I wasn't even upset about all the wasted time I spent researching and filming the previous methods because I was just so blown away by Emu VR. Alright, let's get into the meat and potatoes of Emu VR, the consoles. Pretty much every home console released up to the GameCube can be fully played in this environment. It even supports some peripherals like the light gun for the NES if you ever want to play some duck hunt. But how does this all work? Emu VR runs a layer of RetroArch under the visual environment. When I load Luigi's Mansion into this virtual GameCube, it's running the Dolphin GameCube emulator through RetroArch to play my Luigi's Mansion ROM file from my computer's SSD. The image produced by RetroArch is then displayed on the TV that the virtual GameCube is hooked up to. The best part of this is, the image quality looks amazing and no upscaling or widescreen hacks are required or even recommended since all of the televisions are 4x3 aspect ratio 480p screens, and that's the resolution that all these old consoles max out at anyways. This results in you seeing a crystal clear image with no weird stretching or other visual bugs that might come from running an emulator on a real physical HD monitor or television. You're also not just limited to games. You can play any video or audio files as well in the form of virtual VHS and cassette tapes. All right, everybody, it's 4.30. School is finally over. Time to go home, load up that bong, and watch Pokemon! The videos also look amazing despite playing at a lower resolution, and they even automatically crop themselves to fit the 4x3 aspect ratios of the old school televisions. So if you have any widescreen movies, they'll still fit onto these television screens. Here you can even see I have a vertical video playing that stretches itself to fit the TV perfectly with no black bars. Music playback also sounds great and supports 3D spatial audio, so it actually sounds like your music is coming directly from the player. Yep. I'm pretty sure I could turn up the volume. Yup! The only problem I have with the system for listening to music is that the cassettes each only hold one song, so it's not very practical to listen to multiple songs for a long period of time in this environment, because you'll have to constantly switch out all the cartridges each time a song ends. Okay, so now let me talk more about the level of care and detail put into this program. So I've already talked about manually interacting with the consoles and televisions, but there are so many other little details in this environment that make it look and feel so incredible in VR. The time of day can be changed to anything you want or even synced with your PC's real clock for accurate day-night cycles in your environment, which affect the lighting and shadows in the exterior of your house. You could even change the season, with my favorites being Christmas and Summer. You can also adjust the brightness of your ceiling lamp or even turn it off completely. The light from the televisions will illuminate your room, and the colors being displayed on screen from your game will accurately reflect in the environment. Turning off all the lights and letting the glow from the TV illuminate my room brings back so many memories of staying up past my bedtime to get in a few extra runs of Mario or Punch-Out. Speaking of how detailed the TVs are, let's take it a step further. You can actually see the pixel distortions when looking at the screen at different angles in older 2D consoles like the NES I have running here. And looking even closer will reveal that even the individual sub-pixels on the CRT screens are perfectly emulated. And you can see them very clearly when you put your face close enough to the screen, just like I'm sure we've all done as kids. Here in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, when I look at the red area of the screen from the boxing glove, you can see only the red sub-pixels and some dim green pixels lit up. But when I look over here at the blue background, you can only see blue subpixels. And when staring at the white text, you can clearly see all three RGB subpixels at full brightness. The audio actually plays out of the TV and is fully 3D spatial just like with the cassette players. 
the volume can also be manually raised or lowered. Here you can see the reflection of my ceiling lamp in the television screen when I sit at certain angles, and you can even see tiny scratches on the TV screen at times, although you can disable this if it bothers you. All of these tiny details really immerse you in this environment. Even while playing back my footage during editing, there were times where I would momentarily forget I was watching a screen recording of VR footage. It felt like I was literally watching someone holding their little Sony Handycam up to their CRT to upload gameplay to YouTube in like 2005 or something. This level of immersion is what made me fall in love with VR in the first place. So is this the best way to emulate and play your retro games? Probably not for everyone. There are still a lot of advantages to just running RetroArch and playing your games on a computer screen or TV, such as not having to pay for a VR headset and have a VR ready PC. However, as a VR and retro gaming enthusiast who already owns a VR headset and a powerful computer, Emu VR feels like a dream come true. For me personally, this is the definitive way to play all of my retro games up to GameCube and PS2. Playing my old games in this virtual bedroom made me feel the same way I felt as a kid playing them for the first time. After experiencing Emu VR, I don't think I can ever see myself playing my retro games without a VR headset ever again. If you're interested in what you've seen here, I have a link to Emu VR's website in the description. Their website has a link to their Discord which will then provide you with all of the instructions and information needed to set up this environment for yourself. You can use your VR motion controllers to play all of the games, but you can also use actual wireless controllers like an Xbox gamepad if you need more buttons for the newer consoles like GameCube or PS2. Emu VR even supports Netplay, so you can play split-screen multiplayer games with your friends just like the good old days. If you don't have a VR headset and you're still interested in the project, Emu VR can also be run in flat-screen mode like a regular PC game. This was useful to me for setting up all my custom posters and disc artwork because I was constantly loading in and out of the environment, but outside of the initial setup, running the program on a flat screen is more of a cool novelty than an actual way to experience your retro games. I don't really expect anyone to play PS2 games on an emulated television on their real-life television. The virtual reality aspect of Emu VR is what makes it so magical. Anyways, that's enough from me. I just thought this find was truly incredible and was really excited to share it with anyone else that might find it interesting. Check out the Emu VR website if you are interested, and if you need me, I'll be in my bedroom playing some Persona 4. Have a good rest of your day.